Welcome to the Sacred Fame Podcast. My name is Kasha Rashfal. I'm so excited today to share with you a message I received from Mary Magdalene during our Akashic Records reading I did recently for a client. And I always love it when she comes through because um, I always feel her energy is so fiercely feminine. It's hard to explain, but if you've ever felt her around you, she's just magnificent. And when my client asked this question and Mary Magdalene came through, we both just got covered in goosebumps. We felt her down to our every cell. It was, it was amazing. So my client asked this question, how do I overcome being a people pleaser? I don't know about you, if you can relate to that state of being where you're hoping to make sure everyone else is happy, especially at your own expense, right? I've definitely been there. And I loved what Mary Magdalene had to say in uh, as the answer. Basically, she said to dip into compassion for yourself. Okay, so let's break this down. Um, when we have to have or have to. When we have certain behaviors, it means that those behaviors were useful to us at certain points in our life. People pleasing, especially as women, is one of those traits that, you know, we dip into and we learn how to do it. And then it makes everybody else seem happy. It tends to keep the peace, even at our own expense. And so, you know, it's it's a coping mechanism right? It's one of those things that you had to do it to survive whatever it is that you were going through. It doesn't mean you had to survive strife or struggle, perhaps, right? Drama, trauma of some kind, but it was a behavior that helped you get through it, helped you cope. And this is why Mary Magdalene started with dip into compassion or find compassion for yourself first. Because if you can connect to that part of you, that people-pleasing part of you, what is it that she needs? Why did she have to, why did she feel she needed to please someone else other than herself in those moments? And we may not ever get to the core of the why. And the why doesn't matter so much, right? It doesn't matter what the situations were. You don't have to relive your past. But in those moments when you you chose, whether it was conscious or probably unconscious, when you chose to please someone else other than yourself, it was the best choice. It was literally what you had to do in order to move through those situations. And it was a learned behavior that when you repeated it over and over, because again, it kept the peace, right? It helped you get through. Your brain coded it as, okay, this works. This means we can do it again and we can keep surviving. And unfortunately, for people pleasers all over, it means often surviving, but not thriving, right? It's just, it is what it is. So when this message came through from Mary Magdalene, she said, start with compassion for yourself first, for that part of you that felt like she had no other choice, but to have these behaviors of people pleasing at her own expense. And she just continued that throughout your life. And now you're at a place where you're ready to face that. You're like, okay, I'm ready to have me be the number one in my own life and not others. And so compassion allows you to do that at a pace that is very kind and gentle to yourself. Now, this is the other part of it. When you start your recovery road from people pleasing, it's not going to be comfortable. And again, this is where Mary Magdalene came in and said, compassion will carry you through because it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be hard, especially for the people who are used to you being a people pleaser. Now, this is where we can dive in even more. For the people who matter most to you, your spouse, perhaps, or dear friends or immediate family or children, this is an opportunity to start communicating with them about what you're doing, why it's important to you to stop doing this behavior, right? If it's safe to do so, of course. But presumably, if you're on this path of recovery from being a people pleaser, um, you're ready, right? You are ready. Um, other people who are still in your world but aren't part of that core group to you, they don't need an explanation as to what you're doing or why you're doing it. You simply choose you 
And with compassion for you and for them, you make those choices that are best for you. You don't owe them an explanation. You may want to explain, but you don't have to, right? You, you absolutely don't have to. With compassion for you, you simply do the make the do the choices, make the choices that are best for you. And that, you know, gives the, the gives the other people the opportunity to then rise up and make the choices that are best for them. Now, whenever we are stuck in a pattern with others for a very long time, we get comfortable, they get comfortable, even though everyone's really uncomfortable, right? So the breaking of a pattern can really suck. End of story. It can really suck. It can shatter relationships. It really can. It can change relationships. And that's the thing. The road to recovery isn't always simple or easy. But when you choose you and you decide, you know what, it's time, like it's time for me to please me and do what's best for me and the people who are closest to me, who matter most to me, um, you're going to lose people along the way. But that also means other people will come into your path and, and you will bring, uh, you will have new relationship opportunities. I wish I could say it's different, but that's definitely been my experience. Um, and the experience of, of many of my friends and, and uh, clients. So, you know, the truth is, whenever we create change in ourself, no matter how compassionately we try to do it, someone inevitably falls away. And that's okay, right? It just, it means um, if they were only part of your world, because you were a people pleaser, and now you are taking charge, and you're owning your power, you are reactivating and remembering that you are whole and worthy, and enough. And if they don't fit into that picture, whether by, by choice or not, right, by their choice or yours, um, send them off with love and gratitude. So compassion for you first. So how do we do compassion? And this is where Mary Magdalene went on to say that um, whenever that people pleasing part comes up, and she's often afraid right? She's nervous or whatever it is that you feel when you have that a moment of, of choice. Do I do the ple people pleasing behavior or do I choose me and do something else? She rises up because she doesn't feel safe. And so imagine giving her what she needs that she didn't get in all those moments where she had, she felt like she had no other choice but to be a people pleaser. What did you need in those moments that you did not receive? And of course, you know, we could go down the rabbit hole of why didn't you receive that, whatever you needed. And there's so many answers, right? Usually it's because people didn't know how to be there for you, right? They, they did, were doing the best they can, or people were mean or, or evil around you, right? It, it almost doesn't matter. But if you could go back and give yourself what you needed in those moments, what would that be? And can you give that to yourself now? This is where, especially if you have trauma in your past um, or deep struggles, you know, deep emotional wounds and pains, you don't have to do this process by yourself, especially if you have trauma. Um, please reach out to someone who is at least trauma educated or trauma informed and can help you um, navigate this so you're not alone in it. You want someone that you can co-regulate with and, and make sure that you feel safe and not re-traumatize yourself. You, if you have the skills uh, to be able to do that on your own, absolutely. I would still recommend working with someone. Um, trauma uh I don't want, I don't know what to call it. Trauma educating or trauma informing is what part of my path right now. It never used to be, but it's something that I am um, reading in and, and studying on so that I can be one of those people moving forward um, in, in my energy healing sessions and the Akashic records readings I do, because it's, it's rising up everywhere, right? Everywhere. It's a conversation in the mental health world right now. It's a conversation even in mainstream media. And so there are, but you want to make sure you work with someone who is really good at it, right? Really, really has done their homework and, and knows what they're doing. Um, and then you, you simply take it moment by moment, right? What is it that you need in those moments when you, you know, 
naturally want to do that old behavior, but you really want to interrupt the pattern and do something else. And if you could go back and so to speak, if you could reparent yourself in those moments, re, um, what's the word? How could I explain this? If you could like redo that situation or those situations, what would you give to your younger self so that in that moment she could choose differently if, if it were, were possible? So that that people pleasing behavior wouldn't be so ingrained. And it is through that compassion, that slow, compassionate approach to healing those parts of you that uh, want to feel safe now that they are safe, that you will start to unravel this. It can happen a lot faster than you think possible. The key is to be willing to start and have the right support around you to be able to follow through. And of course, uh, calling, if this, you know, sits with you if if you work with your spiritual team calling on your sacred and divine guides to hold space for you to help you permanently and completely um, remove these behaviors out of your body out of your energy field your nervous system over time you will notice a difference over time that those old behaviors will start to unravel and you will be able to um, simply be the way you want to be for your highest good for the highest good of those people who matter most to you and be able to easily say no to what doesn't fit, right? So I'm so grateful to this message. I know this is a big conversation online and probably you know in, in your world too. And if you need support, if you would like uh, even a referral to someone who uh, is you know very much trained in the trauma world, if that is what you require, uh, please reach out. I'm happy to refer you to practitioners and counselors that I trust that I know have done their work. And if you're curious about doing your own Akashic Records reading, I will put the link below to my website where you can schedule your own reading and ask whatever questions that you have around healing or personal growth. The Akashic Records are a beautiful uh quantum field of information that really house the guidance, the history, the wisdom, and the potential of your soul. And you can ask about anything. Thank you so much for being here with me today on this next episode of the podcast, and I will see you next time.